Thanks, Chris. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to talk about this um, very exciting subject of architectural visualization in Unreal Engine. I'm going to take through, you through some of the projects I've been working on lately. Some were personal projects and some were collaborations with people from Arte Factory in Paris on this lobby scene, for example. Uh, we are going to look at a beautiful project by Tadao Wando in Japan called the Church of Light and some um, look at some lighting examples in there and then the uh, Glass House by Philip Johnson looking at some landscape and um, a kitchen project more of an interior design maybe angle here so just to reiterate what Chris was mentioning in the, in the introduction, we are going to cover these fundamental examples in this first webinar here uh, to really lay a firm understanding of these uh, concepts that we're going to build on on later webinars. So these three ideas here are the idea of real time. These things will greatly change the way we've been working traditionally and I'll cover that in a little bit more detail just following. So the real-time interactivity and this idea of virtual reality and how that's going to help us in our work. So what we're dealing with here is the, this idea of how do we communicate and sell our design using these technologies and using VR and uh, it's a it's an age-old problem for, <laughs> that we've been sort of dealing with for maybe a, well over a hundred years and it's really beginning to impact the way not only we we sell but also the way we design the way we actually do our work and i'm talking obviously about 3d and great uh, creating images so where we're coming from really as sort of maybe designers architects landscape designers engineers or, or product designers or any kind of sort of manufactured element or, of design or product will will always come back to the fact that we've got to generate some blueprints to send to production and that's really what our what the, the designer's job consists of uh, to when it we need to make things for real so this for example is a plan which is obviously very dry it doesn't sort of portray any feeling of a, or, or give a, a sense of what it's like to be there in any way so there's always this difficulty to show to engage clients and partners in the vision in in what really we're trying to sell which is going to be the space in the end or or the object will uh, will that will become part of people's lives and and affect them greatly so this industry of visualization has been alive and very active over the last 20 or so years. This is how long I've been doing it, started in 1996. And we've been leveraging the ever-growing power of computers, the amount of memory and processing powers that these things can now handle is, is absolutely enormous. And the, also the level of artistry has been developed throughout obviously video games the movies uh, have reached levels of realism and and are now able to portray and to 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 communicate a level of emotion which is unparalleled um, really the, the 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 limit of it all is just our imagination so here we've worked for over uh, we've used these power and the, the softwares that have been uh, available to us have been um, incredible and the, the amount of geometry that these things can handle, the amount of realism and uh, the speed at which all this happens is, um, well, the, the, the beautiful images we, we see every day are witnesses of that. So what's the problem <laughs> we, if, it, if it's all so rosy well here is an illustration of the process that we uh, tend to go through when we create for 3d visualization 
in in across industries we end up we start off with a whether it's a 2d or a 3d blueprint uh, um, a model which has uh, been sort of done perhaps roughly perhaps accurately and then that kind of tends to go from for example autocad to 3ds max where we'll do some modeling and uh, organize the the model and maybe set up some viewpoints and then we'll have to give texture and light to this project and a lot of design a lot of decisions happen at that stage as well and then that then goes into another uh, traditionally another package like v-ray where we will start rendering so effectively we'll have to sort of press the render button and then the, all that data gets sent over to the renderer which then goes into another compositing package with maybe with a special effects added on top. So here Unreal Engine is sitting very much across a very broad spectrum of this process enabling us to to look at if eventually having a lot of this happen in just one package for example the rendering uh, happens in real time once the once the lighting is is baked of course and uh, the comp positing can also begin to happen in Unreal Engine now and the special effects are definitely in there the 3D modeling there is there's there's many packages and it's a very complex process that can be d depending on the complexity of the building of course but this is something that currently the uh, the enterprise team are looking at and are are working very hard to smooth this process out and to make it as seamless as possible both ways as well which is very interesting so it's uh, it's something to really look out for in the very near future so this is just to illustrate a little bit where where the engine sits what we're talking about today is the really in the area of the rendering where we're kind of beginning to just take this process out and that's when we're dealing with real time and when we deal with texture and lighting which is very at the core of the visualization process this is also something that is going to sit in one package which is very ex very exciting for a lot of us so what is real-time technology then? Uh, well, as I like to call it, real-time is effectively real world. I'm just showing you here a little movie of Norman Foster drawing in his studio. That is real-time. He's, he's pressing the pencil down on the paper and the mark appears instantly. The world around us is real-time. And this is what we expect. This is what we're used to in our daily life. So when we create, when we work from a computer, we expect this same real world time, <laughs> effectively, which is instant to happen. And this is a, a, a technology that has, of course, been developed by the video game industry. And it's interesting here in this article on Wired that Barg Inkles, who currently designs the Google headquarter, thinks architecture should be more like video games in the sense that we can build our dreams using this technology and then we can inhabit it through play. I recommend you read the article where he describes this in more detail. So... Let's jump in the interface here and I'm going to show you, uh, to illustrate really what it means real time. We have witnessed in the last few couple of years maybe a dramatic improvement in the hardware and in the software where the traditional offline rendering technology is being almost equaled by the real-time technology and so effectively we have here in front of us what could be nearly the quality of a v-ray render that would sort of take a number of maybe a, a half an hour or an hour depending on how powerful your computer is but this is today uh, completely rendered in front of you as I'm moving around the uh, the the space the, there is no delay between 
uh, me having to change the camera angle and the image being rendered in front of me. This is effectively um, the video game technology that I um, was mentioning just before. But as I'm moving around, it's really uh, updating absolutely in real time. So what this means for us is that we can begin to explore spaces just like we would do in a video game, except we don't sort of meet monsters and destroy. I always say these are optional, but effectively what this means in the design process is that as soon as I've found a satisfying camera angle, I can literally, as if I was in the space today, take my phone out and take a picture. Here I can just save this picture directly on my hard drive and begin sharing it, for example, and send it to my clients, send it to my partners. I can also render these extremely high resolution over uh, 60,000 pixels across. I mean, this is also something that would cost you know uh, time a lot of time 60,000 pixel image this is able to output it in a couple of minutes now just to illustrate the 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 point here that in this restaurant area we've got very highly detailed geometry that we wouldn't necessarily not be uh, expecting from video game technology at this stage. The quality of the light is really smooth, is, is very high res, the reflections are all sort of there and sort of going through the glass here, but the the amount of geometry is not really a limit anymore. So this is something that is very new it's it's unprecedented i think in the um, field of visualization so uh, just to illustrate here i'm, I'm actually sitting in the uh, in in the interface of uh, unreal engine and i'm just moving around with my keyboard as a uh, uh, just as I'm talking to you. So what we have the ability to do also is to create uh, movies. And the way these are done is that if I just sort of show you here, we've got the cameras actually in the scene. And these have, have got an animation attached to them through this sort of sequencer facility here. And we just sort of press play and the camera the movie is actually going to play. So I'll just sort of activate my camera and start from the beginning here. If I um, hide all the sort of game gizmos here, I can just actually play the camera exactly as it will be played in um, on my hard drive. This um, I can choose to save these images as they're being played, and uh, the quality of these these. Can, uh, are, are practically sort of equaling that we've got we've got some s sort of post processing effect here there's some sort of bloom on the on the light here all these things that the movie industry have been using for um, or, or photography um, or film has been using for a number of years now we can replicate these and use them in real time uh, without delay and they, they greatly enhance the the quality, the level of uh, em emotional impact we can have on our audience. And of course, once I've saved my movie, I can start sharing it and, and immediately there's there's no, if I make a change, I can just sort of make that change and rerun the movie and two minutes later, the movie is ready. So this is incredibly powerful and saves thousands of hours, literally in the rendering process, all the complication and, and the number of, of um, the software suites we might need to use and so on. Uh, of course, we can uh, output this movie into into another package if if we need to. But this is really, I think, the first time we're, we're able to achieve this kind of quality straight out of a package. Another project I'd like to uh, to use to illustrate this idea of working in real time is the uh, Church of Light by Tadawando. It's a small building in Japan and it's a very appropriate name because I'd like to sort of illustrate this idea of working with light um, in, in architecture and compare it a little bit to the movie of Norman Foster drawing with his pencil on paper where effectively in architecture light and space are very much linked and 
it's a little bit <laughs> the analogy of of the light being our pencil and the space being the, being the paper and here it's a very much a it was such a strong feature of the design we're actually able to manipulate the sun in real time and to kind of place ourselves in there and and move the light and see exactly what the effects would be in in effect with this project it was a sort of a very great importance the way the the sun is going to hit that wall and create a shadow and the, the way that that sort of very um sort of spiritual space is going to um be the the theater of, of light playing uh, uh with the architecture there's another side of this project i'll just sort of take you through quickly the the rest of the uh of the um, of the project here we've got this sort of nice outside area with sort of striking architecture and curves and again unreal engine's really able to to show us um to let us show that in its in its best uh, best effect so here it's uh, another side of the project where i'll just illustrate here how um we've got a very strong feature of this this is actually a very well-known photo of this project and the the beam up here is casting a very strong shadow on the uh, on the wall at the back here and we're able to sort of manipulate again the sun and the light and to really play with the way the shadow works and it's uh, it's a very strong element of, of design that i think it would have been very difficult to uh, to work with uh, with with our traditional offline here we're really able to play in real time uh, as if the the this the space is our canvas and and the the light the, the light of the sun is uh, is the the tool that we use to um to play and design so now we are going to look at the the meaning of interactive technology so again i've caught a little film and uh, this is this time it's frank gary designing in his studio here and it's it's quite interesting to again make the parallel with the real world where this is what i call interactive in the sense that people are taking a piece of cardboard and they're cutting it with scissors and using sellotape and and this is the actual process that they use to design like Frank Gehry is actually looking at it now and pondering over it and he, he obviously looks very concerned and and they're, they're collaborating I'd like to to really sort of reiterate the fact that in our interaction with the computer we are effectively wanting to recreate these real world situations where we're able to look at an object and interact with it so what that translates to in sort of our uh, realm of interaction with it with the computer is that we will expect something to react when we act upon it uh, in just just the same way while while I'm, I'm i'm also here sort of getting ahead of myself when we talk about uh, vr and ar here is that you see that the the interaction happens within the realm of the physical world and they use their bodies they use their hands they, they're sort of looking they're turning the model around here he's sort of using his hands to sort of place an object and uh he doesn't like it and throw it away. I think it's it's quite fun, and, and and it just seems all completely obvious to us. But it's important to point out within this presentation. So here again, I'd like to use uh, another project to show you some of the capacities, some well, some some of the quality that we're able to achieve in in Unreal Engine, and also some of the interactive capacities that uh, we have at our uh, disposal to to play and to design uh, and to to communicate with our partners and clients so this uh, this project it was for a kitchen in a in a traditional sort of victorian uh, house and i'd like to sort of just point out some of the very high quality sort of highly detailed features that we're able to illustrate in this project which is really again reiterating the point that the unreal engine is really now able to 
rival to a very large extent some of the offline renderers that we are where um, we've got and then we're able to really play in real time and also now to interact so just to show you uh, the things for example we can do with the uh, the worktop here if i was with a, a client and we could look at for example the different materials it's very very easy to just completely change the materials here and to um to see what that looks like there's there's no delay there's no need to press render there's we can just completely um, see our options uh, completely easily and freely and uh, um uh, so this is this is in fact uh, interactive in the sense that i'm just sort of changing the material throwing it onto this object and the material is changing uh, immediately uh, another incredibly powerful uh, feature of the software here what um, um, what we have here is sort of these interactive materials and so I'm able to sort of maybe change the um, the the lightness the um, uh, of of this wood even i can sort of decide if i'm going to work a little bit on the reflection here just whether whether i wanted sort of very shiny um you know with that, that this kind of um, um lacquer finish here or or completely matte to give it a different look and this is this is incredibly powerful and it it's literally takes um just a few seconds and this this i'd like to really point out that this this particular type of reflection this sort of blurry reflection is what we would take what we'd call in a rendering um, jargon would actually take a long time um, it's very costly to render these uh, these reflections and here we've got them in real time and and so while we're there i'm just sort of pointing out that the, the quality the quality of the materials the 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 fine detail we're able to see and the and the the light uh the quality of the 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 render of the light hasn't got much to envy to to our offline renders so that's regarding materials Another uh, feature we've got here is, for example, these lights here. The, the lighting is completely interactive in the sense that I can just sort of turn these lights on and see the effects straight away. Uh, I'll just uh, select these and turn them on. And uh, similarly, I can sort of begin to play with the intensity and see what that looks like. And it, in, in the realm of lighting design, this is going to be incredible incredibly uh, powerful to just sort of be able to turn lights on and off without any need for rendering again without any need for post-production to seeing you see what what that um, effect is like and once we're once we're done we're done it's uh we, we just sort of save that share it or uh, try try it in vr and and we can communicate with um, the actual as close to <laughs> what we what the thing will look like in the end so I think this is really greatly going to change the, the way we, we design and uh, interact with, it, with our teams and clients. And finally, I'd like to uh, show some other uh, features really touching on, on the incredible power of, of the software here. But the, the, the interactive feature here is, is again, the, the idea that we want to try and portray a mood, an atmosphere, a sense of life uh, surrounding our buildings or in our buildings. Uh, here I'm using the Philip Johnson Glass House in uh, Connecticut in, in America. And we've got a, a landscape so this is an ex exterior uh, scene and and we've got this sort of the ability to have the uh, the leaves um, flowing so you know it, it's giving this this sense of of life and and the the sun uh, the shadow is also moving we've got little sort of uh, cute little flowers swaying in the wind here and it's all to a very great degree of of realism of atmosphere and we've got um, an enormous amount of 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 data here in the scene trees uh, very high poly and um, the house sort of sits here in the landscape and we've got a very strong sense of atmosphere so if i just 
go into the interface and uh, we're able to uh, use this this incredibly powerful uh, foliage tool which was going to enable us to just liter literally paint very much in this in in this sort of interactive manner so we just sort of take this this tool here and i'm going to just reduce my brush a little bit and just paint some uh, vegetation that i've kind of picked here in the, in, in in this uh, this a bit of the interface and I, I can just literally as I uh, am looking around just pit, put a few of the um, and see what that's like if I don't like it I can just sort of delete it very easily and it's a, again it's a sort of a new way to uh, new way to design in the sense that um, in normally we'd have to either make a drawing an abstract and kind of just look at try and express our ideas in a way which is uh, not so uh, close to what the final product will be like but here it's it takes absolutely no time we can literally share this with our clients and uh, do this with our clients next to us with our teams and 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 look at the result and just literally kind of go in and be feel like like uh, what it's going to be like uh, there's no uh, there's there's it's very <laughs> it's very clear uh, uh, there's there's no compromise and uh, no risk of misunderstanding when you're literally looking at the environment that we're designing so so this is a very compelling piece and uh, I'd like to just maybe show as well the, the how we can manipulate the sun here in uh, just similarly that we did to the church of light <coughs> so I just can sort of grab the sun and I'm able to just sort of move the light uh, in uh, so this is really showing the interactivity maybe in sort of to kind of show a different atmosphere and a different different time of the day or just to kind of illustrate what things would be like for ourselves while we're designing and while we're sort of wanting to create uh, a, a strong sense of place a strong a strong atmosphere um, here we've also got the the sort of the, the clouds slowly moving in the sky and it's really giving us a, uh, a strong sense of place a strong sense of, of being there which is something again to reiterate uh, that I think is has been very much missing from from the design workflow up until now So now on to our third uh, sort of big idea and concept is, is the uh, all-encompassing virtual reality and augmented reality. So of course we've heard so much about virtual reality and so what is, what is it? Well, it is really all of the above. What we've just been talking about, interactive, real-time, all these things happening instantly and uh, reacting to our action upon the world but it happens within the realms of these goggles we can wear on our eyes so obviously the standard way is to look at a screen and play on on the screen using controllers and the technology including uh, mobile technology and these new uh, headsets developed by HTC Vive. Uh, here we've got Oculus and Sony and the Samsung Gear VR which works on mobile and many others developed by Google and uh, other other small and large companies uh, have developed these, these uh, headsets which work effectively by giving us one image her eye giving us the uh, illusion of uh, something in 3d in uh, stereo effectively so we get this uh, sense of distance we get this sense of of real world um, of almost something physical I, uh, I would say and the uh, addition to that is that here we see we've got a stereo in uh, our vision so for the for the eyes we've got also 3d sound so 
effectively what that means is that when a sound happens, it, it can happen all around us, whether it's behind us, above us, and it really gives us a very strong sense of presence, of being there. And what you can see is on this image here is the lady is actually using these controllers, which are really beginning to act like our hands. So some of these controllers give us the uh, option to pick up and to use our hands, our fingers, and it really is becoming something which is showing how we can begin to use our body. So I refer back to the little video that I showed you of Frank Gehry when they were sort of using their body, using their hands and turning the model around and it was a physical interaction with uh, an object. This is really what we're tending to do to use our bodies and the potential of this is, is huge in the sense that we're, <laughs> are we meant to sit at our desk, staying at the screen, uh, using a mouse, effectively clicking. The only thing that needs to be moving is our uh, index finger. I personally don't think so. And I really think that this, to some form, this is, remember, the, the very first generation uh, headset that we're seeing. It only came about uh, a year ago, uh, today in, uh, um, in 2017. So, uh, this is what virtual reality means for us. And let's jump into the interface again and see how we can use that uh, within Unreal Engine. So here I am inside the model of the kitchen. And I'll just click out of that. And so I'm actually in the... Uh, well, I, it's, it's what I'm saying. I, I'm immersed in the project and it feels like I'm actually in there. So what's really interesting is that I'm able to scale by using these two controllers in front of me to one to one. So here it feels like I'm standing inside the space and it feels uh, looks very incredibly real, but also uh, by doing the same pinch movement that we do, we're used to now on our phones and on the iPad, I'm able to sort of scale this down and to look down at effectively what is now an incredibly detailed model of the kitchen. And uh, I can uh, see all the little details all the materials are incredibly accurate i can turn it around move it literally go in and stick my head so this this is is something that we would normally pay a lot of money to have a model one to 20 one to 50 model of a, of a space like this but uh, now effectively we can just have it there within a you know, in, in, in practically no time. It's just a matter of putting the model in and uh, putting some uh, some materials on and we can literally jump in. So now what I'm also able to do, and this is a little bit experimental at this stage, so, uh, but I'm able to access my contents just like I was uh, in the interface and I can just literally grab a chair off my content browser and I can start manipulating this this piece of furniture in VR, and it's as if I am there. So it takes a little bit to get used to the these tools. And again, as I said, they're a little bit experimental at this stage, but it's incredibly compelling to be able to do that effectively. So let's see if I can choose a different material. Material, there you go, and and I'll change back my my worktop in Word, and I can just see what that looks like, and change it back to another material in grey, for example, mm -hmm. and then and then this is this is it, 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 the thing about virtual reality. It's quite difficult to describe. Uh, you really have to experience it for yourself. So finally, to give you an example of what 
augmented reality is, is something which we might have seen before on our phones. But again, the, the amazing thing is that this is something that we can now do inside of Unreal Engine for, for free, <laughs> effectively, and just throw, throw our model in there. And by using a piece of a card with a logo on it, the computer is able to match the movement. You can see the, the, the card there underneath. Uh, the movement of the card and apply that to the 3D model. So it feels like handling the the model. It's really, you can see that the movement, I'm actually sort of turning it around with my hands. And it's it's really the nearest thing to having having the, the actual model in front of you because it's a, it's a very physical thing that it's got this sort of body-like uh, experience. So if I go back to this Church of Light uh, example, the, the reason why I would sort of choose to use Unreal Engine for, for architectural visualiza visualization today is really the idea that, well, first of all, it's free. It's quite a... It's quite an attractive uh, price point, and but the it's it's really the sort of the render quality we're able to achieve. I'm just sort of walking around the project now, and um, the the level of realism is is really um, breathtaking. I would say I can't uh, I can't stop being amazed by uh, the, the the beauty of the light we're able to achieve and the materials and so on. So. Uh, the the, uh, the the level of of interaction the the uh, the level of quality we can get to in the materials as well is uh, incredibly powerful the material editor takes a little bit of getting used to but once you get the hang of it it's very very easy and very user friendly and and very very powerful so in all it's different workflow than offline rendering and it's it's quite simple once you get the hang of it and the other thing is that there's a very very large community of people using it online there's a there's an amazing amount of youtube tutorials and uh, and on forum and uh, epic games have put together this thing called a uh, answer hub which has got the answer to practically every problem you could possibly have there's a lot of uh, of courses that, uh, that uh, some of which are, that I provide and as you've seen the uh, ability to just jump into VR is very very easy you, you can output your projects to your client and send them at, at no cost and uh, to be honest I, I think it's really becoming the industry standard it's the software that a lot of people are using today so yeah it's definitely my choice what's next I'll hand back to Chris for now, and there you go.